I think that VocTech has so many opportunities to change the balance of power, I think, for learners. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of the EdTech Podcast and this latest episode of the VocTech Podcast, Learning Continued, which seeks to explore the intersection of adult learning and tech. Thank you for choosing to listen in and wherever you are, do get in touch with your own thoughts on the show. Last week was a busy old time with a presentation to Austrian education and edtech companies and the publication of our Learning in the Criminal Justice System episode, covering simulation technology, assessment and much more. We're also busy developing up our next episodes on neurodiversity and SEND and recruitment and admissions in our schools and higher education series. So stay tuned for those over the next few weeks. Now, as you may know, this series of the EdTech podcast is supported by our friends at UFI VocTech Trust. And if you don't know the work of UFI, I would strongly encourage you to go and find out all about them as they have the honourable mission of supporting the skills, development and vocational learning opportunities of some of the least well-served members of society through the use of technology. This is especially critical as the COVID pandemic compounds some of those learners' existing disadvantages and isolating factors. In this week's episode, we are reflecting on the impact of VocTech Now!, which was UFI VocTech Trust's grant response this year to support the vocational learning sector in the UK during the COVID-19 pandemic. The VocTech Now scheme offered almost £700,000 worth of total funding, with over £225,000 specifically for further education colleges, supporting 25,000 learners in need. In this episode, we're in conversation with a whole range of different further education colleges uncovering how use of this funding to catalyse digitally enabled projects has changed their approach forever. If you're listening in this week with a great idea, don't forget that VocTech seed grants for early stage projects in vocational learning are also open from the 21st of January 2021, with workshop sign-ups now to find out about grants of between £15,000 and £50,000 for projects lasting from 3 to 12 months. Check out the show notes for the links. Also this week, I've been listening back to a recording of Ty Goddard from the Education Foundation and EdTech Demonstrator Programme during a keynote he provided at the Darlington College EdTech Festival. Here he is musing on the role of colleges and EdTech, a timely setup for this week's episode. This is a time of uh, tragedy. Um, I think it's also a time of uh, triumph, as I said, the the triumph of the everyday. Um, we've seen colleagues succeeding uh, against the odds. Uh, we've seen uh, people battling with little time off, pivoting to remote, pivoting to online learning uh, within days, uh, skilling themselves up. The appetite for change, I think, is all around us. That you know, when March, uh, when March hit and those closures hit, some institutions were in better shape uh, than others. Some had a better digital capacity. They had better digital uh, infrastructure. They had uh, much more experienced capabilities across their staff teams, and they were able to respond in a matter of days. Yes, technology is important, but you can't beat a human being. Um, You can't beat a human being listening, coaching, mentoring, uh, looking after you. Uh, And I think that's the spirit. Um, And isn't that the spirit of uh, FE, further education? And, you know, we we do need to love our colleges. and, And I celebrate the AOC Uh, I celebrate uh, everything that they're about. If you look at all the list of ministerial priorities, ed tech, or or sometimes it's called technology and education, is always down down the list. I think that what you've got across the sector is the most resilient uh, sector in terms of creating jobs. I think it can reskill us for a time 
that is going to be, I, I would suggest, next year um, with uh, various things developing around Brexit is we're going to need uh, job creators and skills enhancers. And I think ed tech, I go for that office for ed tech and digital skills to coordinate all of these efforts across government and give them a sharper, sharper focus. Um, this is the treasure that we have to uh, hold on to is a sense that you can rethink teaching and learning, um, that technology uh, enables you to think and clearly substitute uh, a number of things that you would do as common, good, best practice as, as an educator, but also it can augment, it can reinvent, uh, it can differentiate and personalise uh, the learning experience in ways that perhaps uh, we've only imagined. And think about, you know, on, on the horizon and trickling uh, into uh, everyday life, a lot of those technologies that can reshape our thinking around uh, teaching and learning. Thanks, Ty. And these musings are especially pressing as we mull over the implications of the government spending review as we publish this episode. Some headlines. And this should also be interesting for people listening around the world, also thinking about their own skills uh, gap dilemmas. So some headlines. The UK economy is expected to shrink by 11.3% this year. Unemployment is expected to reach 7.5% by next spring with an estimated 2.6 million people out of work. Uh, There's been an allocated £375 million skills package, including £138 million to provide lifetime skills guarantee, a new £4.6 billion package to help people back to work, uh, a £2.6 billion package for restart scheme to support those out of work for 12 months, um, which if you think about those who uh, were made redundant at the start of the pandemic is soon coming around. Uh, A £1.6 billion uh, for the Kickstart scheme, which subsidises jobs for young people, and £3 billion in extra funding for local authorities, which is a 4.5% increase in spending power. So as you will have heard from that, there's lots of focus on education, training and skills. But what does all this mean for further education? some analysis courtesy of the Association of Colleges. So there's an extra £700 million increase in the non-schools part of the budget that's given to colleges and this is broken down into £291 million for the ages 16 to 19 and this is described as a top-up to the £400 million allocated for 16 to 18 education the current year and £375 million for the National Skills Fund. Um, The state also allocates £2.5 billion for apprenticeships, including core programmes and some new initiatives in construction, health and support for apprenticeship training agencies. So I definitely recommend that you go and check out the AOC analysis of the spending review. Um, There's also additional money for mental health, ageing diagnostics equipment and extra grant funding for councils for social care, which I thought was significant when we think about the potential for vocational technology to transform skills development in these sectors, uh, especially health and social care through um, scale, efficiency or reach, uh, which we'll hear more about in this episode. So let's kick off. We are going to hit your audios with lots of amazing collaborations and outcomes, so do strap yourselves in. To start, here's the wonderful Kev Jones, a project account manager at UFI Voctech Trust, to talk through some of the projects that were successful in the Voctech Now funding round, what their challenges were and what role technology had in supporting learners this year. Well, I'll start with... Kingston Moorwood. So they are a land-based college based down in Dorset. And the problem they were trying to solve is obviously being a land-based college, then there's many events that are either, um, you know, essentially time-based in terms of the season or geography. So with, with lockdown, it meant that a number of students weren't able to come into college and see those, those events. So their idea was to essentially set up a a TV studio where they could stream 
those events um, out to their students who could um, access online. And longer term, the plan is to essentially build this network of land-based colleges around the UK so that uh, students within you know, agriculture and farming can benefit from all of the different geographies uh, and, and seasonal events that they wouldn't have otherwise had access to. Lancaster and Morecambe College, um, based up in the North East, they had a pretty uh, huge challenge to overcome. When the college went into to lockdown, essentially they realised that there was zero online or digital provision available in the college. And, and tutors and lecturers were under a huge amount of pressure trying to essentially do assessment and teaching basically like via email. Um, so they needed to take a number of approaches. They wanted to firstly deploy some technology, so they implemented a brand new uh, VLE across the college. They also procured some, some fairly low-cost hardware in the form of Chromebooks um, that they could give out to students who didn't have access um, to appropriate equipment from home. Thirdly, they embarked on a, on a college-wide um, staff CPD program to basically skill up um, all the members of staff so that they could start to deliver their teaching uh, and learning online and remotely. Um, and, and fourthly, just to basically roll this out uh, across, across all of the staff, but also to the students to induct them into the new VLE. So a huge, a huge challenge, and it was incredible to watch them grow from, you know, from zero to hero in, in six months. The fourth project I worked on was New City College in London. Now, they had already had quite a lot of experience with delivering online, but they acknowledged that there were a few kind of critical areas, some really hard to reach areas that had always historically struggled with accessing online. And these included um, construction, motor vehicle students, they included um, ESOL students and also um, SEND students. So the first thing they needed to do was address some accessibility issues. So they wanted to make it really easy to uh, access online teaching. So they did this by essentially integrating their existing Moodle VLE with Microsoft Teams to allow like one click joining of classes and really and really make those two technologies work seamlessly together and the second stream was actually around developing guides to help students uh, actually access the technology so some of these were, were translated into native languages uh, and others were just based on simple how-to videos that those students could access and then understand how to to use these new tools. Thanks, Kev. Amazing work. Um, one of the projects Kev worked with was Southwest College in Northern Ireland. The problem there was essentially targeting the social and healthcare uh, students and apprentices. So again, when the pandemic hit, they had a number of students who were actually out on the front line dealing with, with patients in care homes and the key problem essentially was that there was a lot of misinformation being spread about the virus. Students were concerned about aspects of, of <clears throat> uh, hygiene and infection control. So they set out to very rapidly um, develop and deploy some e-learning modules with interviews from key staff, um, nurses, etc., to try and put those those accurate facts back into the hands of students who were then able to you know continue their studies but also to continue the the absolutely critical like caregiving services that they were they're already doing. Here's Melissa and Louise to tell us more. Um, my name is Louise Woods I am a digital learning developer in Southwest College and um, my name is Melissa Grimes and I'm one of the learning resource centre coordinators for Southwest College on the Dungannon site. So let's remind ourselves what the problem was. Well, the student feedback, so they were sharing worries that they were obviously out in the front line providing support and care, you know, to, to vulnerable people. 
um, during the pandemic, maybe working in service areas, nursing, you know, residential care, domiciliary care and supported living. So they didn't have an actual platform to go to to access um, resources. So in response to that, we designed the online COVID-19 health and social care toolkit to provide them with the resources to accelerate their, their learning in the workplace. So you've got learners who are anxious and uh, a wealth of disinformation circulating. Many of those learners hadn't ever been exposed to end of life environments or, or other environments that suddenly they were thrown into the middle of. And in response, and with the Voctec now funding, Southwest College pulled together an online health and social care toolkit, which could be accessible 24-7 to provide up-to-date certified information from friendly subject matter experts in a variety of media. Uh, so, yeah, so basically our, our online health and social care toolkit um, was based on, on Canvas. We would use Canvas as our LMS. So we created that um, on Canvas, um, and then our three modules um, we created on Articulate Rise. Um, so it was a, a software that we had been using. Um, we found it very, very good to get some, you know, interactivity into it. So we said we had the three um, modules: end of life care, infection prevention and control, and mental health awareness. Because we were all off, we were all off site at that point for digital learning technologists who were working on the project, they would have um, done some online recordings with, with the, the members of staff. So they did some, you know, introductions into, say, certain modules or um, and they did voiceovers over some of maybe PowerPoints or just you know, some wee podcasts. It definitely made it more personal for the students to, to have a face who had created the content, you know. One of the best bits about this project was the human-centred approach combining the best of people and technology. I think the students um, have grasped it very well. And I think it was evident that they benefited from the support that was offered, you know, coming from a learning resource centre, which is your traditional sort of um, library, if you like. The fact that the toolkit was very flexible and was able to be used in diverse ways suited the range of and abilities of the students at South West College. You know, we we had excellent subject specialists. Um, that had such passion for their subject. You know, we had a Marie Curie nurse who was um, who was doing the end of life care, and um, we had a nurse for her infection control and prevention. So somebody with lots of knowledge, but also very passionate about the project. You know, it was very evident, and from all you know, working with them, you know, they were very excited about the project. You know, it was something maybe that they hadn't they hadn't done before but it, it didn't matter we had we had staff where you know they might have known how exactly to, to put that into a module or you know but it was that partnership and I think you know from from the development end that was that was something that was that I, I found to be um so beneficial that that the subject specialists that we had in Southwest College were, were just excellent and they, from start to finish um, they were just they were just brilliant. Yeah, could I just add? I think obviously the college is, is no stranger to you know carrying out successful uh, projects. But this project not only was it a totally online toolkit, but the actual idea and the project plan from the very beginning was all conducted online because obviously we were all working remotely. So there was a lot of lessons learned even through that with ourselves. And Louise and I are part of. Of, a, of the same team but we're on different sites so even her and I working together online was you know beneficial as well and we got to know each other you know even better through that and then into the wider team with the digital learning technologists and then as Louise said with the subject specialists you know we had smaller meetings and then we had bigger team meetings and then obviously even the meetings with the, the, the representative from MPOC Tech Kev who was dealing with us everything was totally online so, you know, designing something that was going to be online whilst we were all online, you know, was actually quite appropriate at the time. So Southwest College doing amazing work. And I love that they also learned about their own online collaborations in the process. To hear from more projects, here's Ian Grayling, another collaborator with UFI Voctec Trust, with an overview of the projects he helped to support. Well, I worked with four projects. Uh, they were 
uh, the Isle of Wight College, uh, Burnley College, uh, Lincoln College and West London and Hammersmith Colleges. Lincoln College were, uh, before the pandemic, considering overhauling their uh, learner management system for learners at the college. But it wasn't that sort of move wasn't wasn't happening very, very quickly with the pandemic and the UFI grant. It suddenly enabled the college to take on a new learner management system, which was Canvas, and break down some of the barriers culturally and in practice of teaching and learning at the college against the use of technology and to accelerate that transformation to um, tech-supported delivery methods. And it proved to be very, very successful. And uh, in the words of the project lead, he described it as barriers falling like dominoes once they got the staff engaged with Canvas and they saw the the power of it um, beyond just simply uh, recording lessons and broadcasting them. They they started to see the the time-saving element of tech and and how they could um, be much more on top of learner progress and and, and so on. Another... um, aspect of that project which was less foreseen at the beginning was that it helped them improve their their data and analytics and it sort of paved the way for them to to look at the data in a more predictive way rather than just descriptive of, of you know what what's happening in terms of learner progress okay um west london college West London College was an interesting project in the sense that um, the use of technology enabled the college to expand its um, catchment of of learners by providing direct professional development for employers. So um, what they were doing was reaching employees of companies in the food production um, sector and um, in so doing were you know working outside the normal streams of funding for a further education college. The very interesting aspect for me in mentoring that particular project was that employers were leading this together with trade unions and trade union reps and what they wanted to do was to upskill what was predominantly um, well a workforce that was predominantly uh, English as a second language uh, to help them with their English skills as well as um, some sort of fundamental vocational um, input um, you know on things like health and safety for example um, to get these particular uh, employees onto some form of progression uh, and career, you know, career career progression. Um, the college bought into a, a, a very established network of FE colleges and with it um, a, a library of very uh, good tried and tested online resources and together with uh, staff from the college working peripatetically with uh, union reps and employers uh, were able to support people within the within the workplace right okay then um burnley college the way burnley college used their ufi funding was to target um 25 courses within their overall curriculum which had previously no online provision and uh, they uh, introduced to the staff to the students uh, of those courses the google education suite so um, google classrooms and 
uh, and with it uh, trained up uh, a cohort, fairly significant cohort of about 60 staff as Google educators. Uh, they also um, recruited from the student body digital champions, which was great because then the learners had um, peers, you know, within their uh, within the student body who they could go to for support if they didn't feel that they um, wanted to go to the the, the staff. So um, essentially. That the outcome of that was that, um, that the, these courses, which were quite often in curriculum areas, which were a little bit hard to reach in terms of um, moving to a, a, a more online or blended uh, delivery model, uh, have, have now taken to it um, exceedingly well. And uh, in many cases, um, uh, they now, the college now has a number of zealots for technology within the staff base. One project Ian worked with was the Isle of Wight College. Here he describes their situation this year. So Isle of Wight was very interesting from the point of view of the uh, project lead uh, was in charge of apprenticeships at the college. And apprenticeships are often sort of like a little bit outside the normal student group in that they are... um, predominantly with an employer for four-fifths of the time. So they are a little bit more sort of distant to the college than uh, a full-time student. Uh, Dawn, the project lead there, was very concerned that um, given their sort of general separation from the college, she, she didn't want them to fall through the net, as it were, with the COVID pandemic. And uh, so she introduced them to Microsoft Teams, in essence, and basically use uh, the Microsoft apps uh, uh, and Microsoft Teams to ensure that they were regularly in contact and supported. Uh, The interesting aspect that came out of that project was that it not only provided that continuity of support for the apprentices during the pandemic. It also brought their employers and other members of the curriculum support team into uh, a more sort of integrated and coherent sort of support package through using the uh, the tech uh, to, to maintain that contact. And in particular, a group of, of staff known as assessors who uh, are often working independently of learning delivery. Uh, they work peripatetically in the main um, with, with, with apprentices uh, and often feel not really very much integrated into the learning support team. And again, that particular group of staff, uh, through the use of Microsoft Teams, uh, have started to sort of feel a lot more sort of integrated as part of the, the curriculum support mechanism in the college, whereas before they felt somewhat outside. I spoke to Dawn at the Isle of Wight College to find out more. Um, I'm Dawn Smart, uh, and my main role is to look after the learners and the employers uh, that are on friendship provisions. Um, we have quite a large friendship provision here. Uh, we cover most sectors. Uh, We have brilliant employers who are really supportive. um, And as you can imagine, that keeps us quite busy. Uh, And especially through the COVID crisis, uh, there were a lot of worried employers and learners who we were supporting um, as best we could. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges was the fact that overnight, our employers weren't where they were supposed to be, uh, and neither were our apprentices. Uh, we use an e-portfolio system. So from a, from a work side, uh, their work they could access quite readily. Um, but what we felt we needed to do was support both our learners and employers in quite a scary time when they were feeling quite vulnerable. Uh, nobody knew how long we were going to be in lockdown. Um, a lot of work had been done with curriculum to get um, the learning onto Teams. So from a, from a knowledge point of view we knew our apprentices could access things but it was how we could then deliver the apprenticeship remotely in a way that we had never delivered it before um, whilst looking after the learners and employers in a pastoral way Uh, and we were really successful in doing it through the help that we got through VoxTech. The 
the funding was great. Uh, the project was more than that, though. I think that the support that we got from the project manager was brilliant. Sometimes when you're being quite uh, reactive to a situation, it's really nice to have some time to sit down and have a conversation about where you're headed and, and what your challenges are. Uh, and it really helps you to be focused and self-reflect as a college on, on what direction you need to take. The funding, obviously, um, is really, really helpful. Um, we managed to purchase some software called Pinnacle. Uh, that enables us to change resources into videos and be a bit more creative and specialist in, in the stuff that we're doing. Uh, with regards to um, the pastoral side, we set up a Teams channel for all apprentices. Uh, often, even when there isn't a crisis, apprentices can feel very isolated. They're with an employer. Uh, not all of them come into college anyway. Uh, and it's making them feel like they're part of a community, a learning community. And that way, we were able to set them work, uh, set them tasks that they could come onto Teams and, and do together. Uh, and that's definitely something that we've continued albeit that we're in the second lockdown, but we will, uh, we continued in between the lockdowns and we will continue um, afterwards because it really did bring in a sense of community. Um, it gave us the opportunity to support employers and uh, learners and staff in utilising teams, which was something that we'd spent a lot of time with the curriculum side and not so much with the assessors. Um, so it was a case of doing things differently. We learned how to combine the portfolio and team's provision so that they could utilise both at the same time. Uh, we purchased eight iPads, so um, learners are able to borrow those so they can go and uh, video assessments. So, you know, the whole package was, was really helpful, the funding and the support that we got um, from, from the experts as well. Uh, so we do health and social care, uh, both childcare and health and social, uh, which obviously that was a massive challenge. They were very busy. Um, so you have to be very responsive to their needs. Using technology with regards to health and social care is um, it's new to them, but that was really successful. Um, we have animal care, horticulture, uh, all aspects of engineering, including plumbing, electrical, motor vehicle, manufacturing. Uh, we have the trades, so we do brick uh, and wood. Um, we've got IT. They they obviously embraced it. Um, they 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 thought it was fantastic. Uh, and we have um, all of the business sectors, so accounting, management, HR. So we do. We really try to support as many businesses in, in as many ways as possible on the island. And I think the the ones that, that found it the hardest are the trade occupations. Um, however, they were really keen to try something new. Um, hair and hospitality, again, it's been a really tough year for, for them. The employers have been very vulnerable. The learners have been very nervous. Uh, and we were, managed, we were able to support all of our apprentices whilst they were on furlough. Uh, the ones that we were hoping to achieve, achieved. Um, so it has been, in touch wood, um, a really good year for us and it's enabled us to look at the way that we do things and think actually there's another way and let's try something new and the staff have been um, really embracing it the learners I, I, I think the learners are always incredible anyway uh, they're so adaptive to lots of different things uh, and the employers have been really good in, in looking at a new way of delivery as well for those learners who would be doing sort of on-site work and training, did some of those continue and was that kind of enabled through the technology as well? Um, so if I give an example, uh, electrical, uh, we have quite a large electrical provision. Um, and one of our learners uh, went out to do an electrical job because obviously that's an essential service. Um, and they videoed their work that they were doing. Uh, they sent it to the assessor through Teams. The assessor was able to mark it uh, and they were able to progress. And at, not, uh, at no point did either the assessor or the learner meet. Um, the employer was involved. You could, it, it was very easily verified. So it was obvious that it was the learner's work. Um, and that's a really different way of doing it. Um, our marketing assessor 
was delivering knowledge workshops through Teams. She was recording it. She worked with our um, ILT technicians who um, designed some bespoke interactive activities. Uh, it was it was more of an interactive. It wasn't just uh, the marketing assessor sitting there giving a lecture. It was very much broken down and it was recorded so that once the learners have completed it, if at any point that they needed to go back, they could go and review um, the work. So it's been utilised in, in quite a few different ways. Yeah, uh, Microsoft Teams, it was new to the college uh, for everybody from about March the 20th. No, you've never seen a group of people learn something so quickly. <laughs> um, but the assessors, it, it took a bit longer only because the assessors weren't around uh, because obviously they were in the workplaces doing their job when we did the main delivery for the curriculum. And actually looking at how curriculum dealt with teams, it was very clear that there was something different that we could do with the apprentices and the employers. So it was, it was completely different for them, a different way of working. Um, and they have been really responsive to it. What do you see as the future for VocTech in further education? Um, I think that what the pandemic has taught us is that there are a hundred different ways to achieve something. Um, and I think that VocTech has so many opportunities to change the balance of power. I think for learners, they can be more interactive with the way that they learn. And a lot of those learners have embraced it. It's a different way of learning. And I think the teachers have been brilliant they're, they're, and the assessors. They've, they've sort of looked at it and gone, oh, actually, there's lots of different things that we can do. Uh, we can carry on with differentiation. So it hasn't stopped that. Uh, people can you know, go off and um, challenge themselves uh, we can we can work as teams better I think because I think that it enables us to join groups of people together that wouldn't normally have joined together um, and I think that it gives us the opportunity to have a look at, at everything that we do in a different light and I and I think that if it hadn't have been for the Covid crisis and I'm not one to say hurrah for the for the pandemic but I think if it hadn't been for that it would have taken much longer to get to where we are. And I think that um, VocTech has changed education forever um, in a really positive way. Good luck with the rest of the year as well. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Dawn. Great to hear of the work also the island is doing to strengthen its digital strategy and how the college is supporting. I'm obviously all for this, having been born on the Fair Isle. OK, time for one last project in detail. This time it's Lancaster and Morecambe College going from 0 to 100 digitally speaking and launching whole college staff CPD and VLE in the midst of the pandemic. Here's Ian Parkinson in conversation with Mark Bethelemy at UFI VocTech Trust about what went down this year. We've got a population of about a thousand students on site. Uh, we realised very quickly moving towards the potential COVID lockdown situation that our remote learning package that we had on site was virtually nil. Um, the skills of our staff and the skills of our learners to be able to enable remote learning uh, was almost negligible and we had to do something very quickly in a very short space of time in order to ensure that we could cope with remote learning and the concept of remote learning to train our staff uh, and also to engage our students with over what we foresaw as a, as a very difficult summer. Um, that meant that each of our curriculum teams within a very short space of time um, were, were directed towards uh, the, the needs of remote learning. Um, they were directed towards uh, ensuring that our students had the IT structure um, available to them and the knowledge uh, what, of how to access that um, potentially through a VLE or through um, the IT opportunities that we were providing through this project. Um, it's very clear that 
uh, we weren't ready, we weren't prepared, probably like most other colleges in the in the country, to to engage within this within this type of uh, of huge um, education change. Um, but we were really re ready and, and really willing, with a, with a great team on board here at the college, to to engage in this type of project to move quickly and respond to the uh, what we saw as the immediate needs and and the immediate threats to to the teaching and learning for our students. Brilliant. So, can you tell us a little bit more detail about what what changes you actually made? Yeah, we we identified where we could hit uh, or make the biggest impact. We identified um, through our apprenticeship provision that we needed a new uh, virtual learning environment for learners to be able to access and to be able to use, and also for our tutors uh, and, uh, and 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 our assessors to be able to work through in order to maintain that teaching and delivery to our apprenticeships uh, and our apprentices, um, however that may be. Um, and that was one of the one of the issues early on, how we um, entered with our staff into this project and and engaged with our staff to to work with the VLE, not just as a as a repository for information, but as a as a, as a means and a, and a mode for communication through live classes, whether it be through vocational interest within residential childcare, or whether um, we worked with with the learners through the VLE on on the on the maths and English on their functional skills, um, the whole package, the employability skills, in order to to make sure that we could gain the best from a, a virtual learning environment for our apprentices as possible, whilst continually training our staff up to, to, to work with the resources. We worked with a, a focused group to start with. Um, so the, the aim was to, to, to engage the VLE to, to meet the needs of a, of a, of a very um, dispersed set of apprentices within residential childcare across the north of England. Um, and, and we were able to engage that team very, very well and very quickly through the VLE um, to be able to meet the needs of, of the course and the programme and also to keep the, the, the learners, keep the apprentices, um, continuing through their course provision, um, which prior to this project would have been quite difficult. Of course, yeah. So you know, over the course of the last six months, it, it, you've, you've been through this massive change. You must have learned some lessons, I'm guessing. We have learned a lot of lessons. We have really learned about the adaptability and flexibility needs of our teaching and learning. Uh, across full-time programs and across apprenticeship provision as well. Um, we have learned that we are able, um, as, a, as, a, as an organisation, as a large organisation locally educationally, um, to increase and to, to, to really move and press the button on pace of change. Uh, we have made a huge impact within a short space of time. We've been engaging with hundreds of learners um, where we wouldn't have expected to be six months ago, eight months ago. We've increased the skills of our staff. We've increased the confidence of our staff. Um, we've, en we've enhanced our local uh, reputation through providing online um, delivery, which actually some of the local schools have, have not engaged within. Um, and we've been able to, to provide that element. Um, we've learnt about the types of resources that will best suit. We've learnt about the types of uh, practice that our, the pedagogy of our, of our staff to, to get the best um, processes and, and practice within delivery. Um, we've also learnt that, you know, there, there are some that will fly along the road and there are some that will, you know, that will get there in the end, um, but will need that training and development and that support in order to make sure that they get uh, that the, their skills um, attain a, a, eventually the, the level that we need to, to, to create good practice on, on remote learning. We've also learned that we've got a, a really, really, um, a really positive set of students to work with as well. Um, we were surprised at the, how well the student base engaged. Um, we really, really worked well with ESOL learners on the project. And the ESOL learners uh, were fantastic in their engagement. Um, they loved the learning packages. They loved the remote learning. Um, they enjoyed the way that the tutor engaged with them um, online. And these are these are brand new students from um, overseas, from very you know very poor areas, very poor countries, 
um, come into a situation in a, in a brand new country where actually they can't go to education and and the only way that they were going to get the education was through um, the remote packages that we could produce um, through our ESOL delivery team here. Um, they did a fantastic job. They worked all the way through the summer and, and the students uh, have, have given nothing but praise um, to the project, which is absolutely fantastic. So has this change happened across all curriculum areas then? The change initially wasn't across all curriculum areas. We, we focused on um, a key sector of apprentices. Um, we worked with ESOL learners and then we looked at some, some curriculum provision, which um, we thought at the start of, of the lockdown period would, would need um, a, a maximum amount of, of online delivery. Uh, what, we, what we quickly found out that that wasn't the case and that actually we would have to work with all learners and that we would have to work across all curriculum sectors and that the training development needs will be for all our staff and all our students and, and, and that actually we had to go um, across the college to work with uh, the vast, vast majority of, of curriculum sectors that we work within. Um, it was very difficult in some of the skills areas. Um, some of the the hair, the beauty, um, some of the construction sectors, um, they found some of the skill development aspect um, a little bit more difficult to, to work with. Um, but then when we understood the needs of mitigation qualifications over the summer, um, it became clearer how we would use the remote delivery and how we were going to be able to use uh, the live delivery uh, when we were able to bring um, the few learners that we could back on site in order to make sure that we were able to complete learning and complete qualifications for students. So let me take you back to March and April time of this year and knowing what you know now, if you were doing it again, what would you do differently? Well, I wouldn't, the first thing I wouldn't, I, yeah, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't change the outcomes of the, of, of the project. We, we had a very defined set of outcomes which uh, we, man we managed to maintain with the support of, uh, of, of Curve, our mentor, um, but also to expand and broaden. And I think that was the key, that we, we maintained our key objectives, but actually looked at the wider scale in order to, to change along the pathway of, of, of the summer and, and, and all the changes with the different restrictions that were, were in place on education and, and education organisations. Um, the adaptability of those outcomes was key. So that, that would be one difference. A second difference would be purchasing. I would seriously have considered if I'd have told myself to purchase much, much more, much sooner. Uh, one, because of the, uh, the, the supply chain elements uh, were breaking down quite quickly over the summer and uh, pricing was increasing. Uh, and, and actually what we wanted to get was as much value for money out of the project for the learners as possible. Was this for hardware? For yeah, it was for hardware, yeah. So quite, quite a, you know, a proportion of our bid was for hardware. Um, we, we actually managed to, to purchase the VLE fairly quickly um, and, and get that into play. Um, it was some of the hardware issues, which was to support the learners um, in, in being able to access um, online and, and remote sessions, which, which actually proved some of the more more difficult aspects to come by. So yes, I, I would have uh, I would have jumped on that one uh, almost immediately if I'd have uh, just reminded myself about that. Another thing was 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 around um, systems, IT systems, software capabilities, uh, smooth walls uh, to make sure that everything was as clear as possible um, for the systems to work. Um, it did take a, a little bit longer than than expected to get through. Um, the, the college systems and to and to build um, what we found eventually as the as the best means of of remote communications for our learners through the laptops. Um, we used a new set of laptops. We used fairly new system to the college. Um, but yes, earlier testing um, would have been a little bit beneficial to a rollout of the uh, of the project a little bit a little bit earlier. Um, but we've got past that now. We, we, we've, 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 um, we've, we've structured it in a way that it's, it's, it's not a problem. Um, it just took a little bit longer than we were expecting. Um, the, the final thing, if, if, I could, if I could go back six months, uh, I'm probably 
introduce this to myself would be would be to look at future proofing much earlier. Um, we had the outcomes, we had the objectives, and we were working to them quite closely. The the, the remit of the project was fairly tight, um, and and it was to develop the college's uh, remote learning systems. Um, but actually, what we found across the summer was that that is a never-ending process, and and it wasn't just to start to get to a to a finish line and then. Uh, then everything would be fine. It's not because there is so much more to learn, and that's exactly what we found. And that as soon as we were coming to halfway through the project, it was opening our eyes to new opportunities, new new horizons, new directions for different teams to work in, uh, new different softwares, um, new 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 pieces of, of detail for maths and English. So we used um, another piece of software that we purchased to link into a, to our VLE for apprentices for maths and English. Um, and then the CPD that we were we were developing across the across the project was again opening up more and more opportunities for collaboration for partnership. So I would probably tell myself six months ago, you know, don't just focus on the project. You know, the project is there and it's right in front of you for the next six months. Actually, look at the vision and look at the future of what is out there. Um, what will be taking place over the next two to three years at college, which is and will be. Um, revolutionary for what's ever taken place at the college before. So it sounds like this is the beginning of a very long-term change. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're on this path. We've just established this week a new team of uh, remote learning facilitators who will work across the college uh, to support, to share practice um, and, to, and to engage with new learning tech, teaching and learning techniques for, for our staff and to be there if a member of staff actually just needs to pick a phone, drop an email, and to find out about um, anything to do with uh, remote learning practice. Um, we have set up two new remote learning studios in college uh, that staff can access um, to work with learners remotely. Um, they're being well used, um, well resourced, and, and we think that over the next six to eight months that every team will then have one of those remote learning studios for remote delivery within their within their own sections and we have approximately we have eight program areas subject sector program areas plus apprenticeships so we're expecting them uh, to quadruple if not more the number of remote learning studios that we do have so not going to go back to how it used to be i don't think we can i i I i think we're too far down the line i think um the the direction of movement with the staff the motivation of staff the positivity from learners and and their their desire to 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 move into this direction means that actually it's it is the way forward um i think you know if you talk to educationalists and if you talk to 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 college managers especially we sort of knew this was coming um the the restrictions have given us a nudge in the right direction and meant that actually we have to really focus on uh, changing our um, systems, changing our practices, uh, changing our CPD and, and understanding the, the long-term direction, not just the, the short and the medium, but it has to be where we want to be for our learners in all, on, in all courses, not just theoretical delivery, um, in all courses for, for that remote education to take place. Phew, some amazing projects there and I'm hoping we'll get the chance to share even more of these over forthcoming episodes. But before we wrap up this epic episode, some final learnings from the Voctech Now collaboration. There has been a, a, a sort of almost paradigm shift through all of this, which goes along the lines of um, tech is not just a poor substitute for the real thing, i.e. you know, getting learners in via video when really you want them in the class, you know, face to face. It's not about uh, being a substitute, for, poor substitute for the real thing. It is about enhancing teaching and learning. In other words, um, tech um, needed to be implemented in the way it has been through the pandemic before the pandemic and after the pandemic, because it actually helps the teacher to teach um, cohorts of 15, 20, 
learners in the class if they're actually using tech online, collaborating online, even though they're in the same room. For example, it enables the teacher to see um, or get get a, um, a measure of formative development of every one of those learners, which is almost impossible for a teacher who's teaching from the front um, without technology, if that makes sense. You know, they, they may have 15 learners in the, in the group, of which five are very well engaged, probably 10 are engaged some of the time, and, and you know, um, uh, or, or another five are engaged some of the time and, and five at the back are not engaged at all. But you can't actually know that for sure without spending time, you know, chasing those learners, which they don't have time to do. But actually using the tech that they've been using because of the pandemic is helping them to realise that they can actually know where every learner is and what each learner is doing and how well they're doing and whether they need support. So I know I said before this call that I wouldn't ask you any deep deep questions, but I'm going to ask you a deep question. So what what would you say are the uh, the characteristics of a, a, a good online teaching uh, program or good online teaching um, way of doing things? How, what what makes them, what makes it good? I think. Uh... The first thing is it's it's got to meet the needs of the user. So that includes understanding their starting point, understanding their motivations of, of why, uh, and also essentially being usable in the sense that it can it can be flexible around when they want to study, how they want to study, uh, and at every possible at every possible junction to try and remove any barrier that may, you know, impede that learning. Uh, I think the the other thing as well is around engagement. It's very, very different where, you know, you've got this kind of this, the, the lack of um, personal touch. Mm. So looking for opportunities to maintain that, that presence, that sense of, you know, connectedness, um, the social aspects um, and really thinking deeply at all the different opportunities that are available to to bring some of the best elements of face-to-face -face learning and to improve those or um, facilitate those online. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening in, everyone, and to all of the fantastic guests and contributors to this week's episode. Um, and another reminder that uh, grants for early stage projects in vocational learning um, through Voctec Seed um, and grants of between £15,000 and £50,000 for projects lasting from three to 12 months are open in January. Um, and there are workshops uh, going on from now to January to answer any questions you have and to gauge interest. So do get signed up to those if that sounds like something that you should be working on. All the links for that in the show notes, along with details on all this week's guests and their work. If you like this episode, please rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love to hear from you. And, um, Whilst we are here, a huge, epic, enormous shout out to the amazing Professor Sarah Gilbert, um, who worked on the latest uh, announced uh, vaccine, uh, is the mother of triplets and whose story is a great lesson in everyone realising their potential. Um, so loving her work and... I hope that she uh, is able to maintain some level of um, quiet, which she uh, seems to relish in these moments. But what an amazing woman. Go and find out more about her. For upcoming events, competitions, funding and more, sign up to our newsletter. But that's it for now. Take care. We'll be back with uh, a new episode coming out soon on neurodiversity and SEND. Take care. All right. Thanks, Sophie. Bye-bye. 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 All right. Good chance to you, Sophie.